Oh, I know, I know. Hi, this is Clark Sullivan, live streaming directly from 50 Fremont Street, the financial district of San Francisco. We're here at 50, we're here at the Consulate General of Japan. That's the way, but I would just say Japanese Consulate. But it's way up here in this building. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. As uh, I guess there's about 10, 15 people here. We're assembling for the No Nukes action. Uh, here in remembrance of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, when over 120,000 people were incinerated in one brief instant by an atomic bomb. Anyway, there's been lots of, it seems like Japan is number one in nuclear disaster. Their whole country basically was being powered up by nuclear reactors uh, because they were trying to get away from coal. And Japan is a real, is one of the largest oil importers in the world. So they couldn't use fossil fuels because it was too expensive. So they decided to switch over to nuclear power. And well, we see the results of ha what happened when they had nuclear power. Uh, of course, the Fukushima reactor totally melted down. It was the worst nuclear disaster in history. Large swaths of Japanese territory are unoccupiable. Literally, people can't live there. The only people that are staying are the old people because they don't want to change. They don't want to, you know, have to change their whole life uh, to accommodate uh, the ever-present radioactivity, which has even shown up in the fresh fish that's caught off the coast of California. Things like milk, soy milk. There's a lot of food products that you ingest that now have shown up with traces of radiation in them. Uh, and we're talking about quantities that are significant where maybe you should consider how much fish that you eat, which is really sad. And especially if you eat things like tofu, or not tofu, but um, uh, sushi and sashimi that will contain radioactivity. Your organic vegetables like tomatoes and things like that will contain radioactivity. So this is an ever-present source that's po poisoning the earth, poisoning the biosphere. And we're here to make a statement against this. We're against nuclear power. We think that there's other cleaner ways of generating power because uranium and plutonium definitely constitute a real and eminent hazard to human health here on the planet Earth. So that's why people are here and we welcome you to join us. If you're here in San Francisco, you can come down to 50 Fremont Street, that's Mission in Fremont, between uh, at, uh, half block west or east of first, half a block east of first, sorry. And uh, join us. I'll be here until 2 p.m. If you'd like to uh, register or if you'd like to chat with me live, you can do so on my my smartphone here. Just log on to the social stream, which is either beside or underneath the, the live stream. Uh, we're streaming from OBAU.org is in addition. And my URL is U-S-T-R-E dot A-M slash G-X, capital G, rather, H. XB. So that's U-S-T-R-E dot A-M slash capital G H-X-B. So uh, I see uh, Don is here. How are you doing today, Don? You got anything you want to say to the to the audience out there? The audience out there? Yeah, we're live streaming uh, on uh, OBAU.org and, and uh, also I do a live stream channel of all important political events here in San Francisco. So you've been a long time activist involved in Livermore uh, Labs Action. Do you have any... Uh, any words to say to the people out there? Well, all I can say is as long as nuclear power is allowed in the world, nuclear weapons are inevitable somewhere. So we got to do them both. And that means, you know, stopping San Onofre, stopping Dabo Canyon, stopping all the nuclear plants, making no more fissionables. And then maybe we'll stop making bombs if we stop getting all the fissionables and tell that we've got enough set aside to make plenty more. But Right now, it's a matter of proliferation. How many hands can we keep it out of at this point? I don't know. But as long as the United Nations sees the right to own a nuclear power plant as a sacred obligation for every country, that's going to... FUC came with us all for, the, for, for as long as the radiation holds out. That's going to be a million years. So, I still plan to be around them. I hope you do, too. Oh, definitely. And, I don't know how many reincarnations that's going to be, or if I'll be a human, or if it's inhabitable, but anyway, that's my plan. I'll be here in a million years to look it over, and I hope to catch up with it. So uh, what do you think of all the, actually I've had enormous protests in Japan against the uh, 
nuclear power. I mean, there was hundreds of thousands of people out in the last two weeks. Uh, Japan, yeah, Japan's getting people out. We're getting, you know, we, this country is way too uh, comfortable. You know, I mean, even the poor people, like us, <laughs> the 99%. I'd be poor here than a lot of places like Palestine or any place else. I can think. Well, of. Japanese enjoy a pretty uh, high standard of living. They've got a pretty high standard of living, but they're ground zero for the worst high nuclear accident ever. So, if that happened in New York, if if, if the same accident were to happen at, um, uh, we'll see that on New line. York. The, yeah, right. That one. The same thing would happen. There would be a million people in the streets every day calling for a shutdown of nuclear power. But it didn't happen here. It happened there. So they're doing it. So uh, you think it'll do is support them from whatever eight, ten thousand miles away, and hope we don't get too much of the residue of the of the radiation that's going to keep uh, creeping in. That's that's a pretty us. tragic statement that you just made. That you believe that it's going to take a nuclear disaster here in the United States to get people to do anything about it. You know, uh, well, I would say that's pretty indicative of of that goes about anything here in the United States. Um, as Americans, unfortunately, uh, a lot of Americans have been lulled into a false sense of security provided by materialism. And uh, and as Americans, we haven't had to deal with a lot of the shit that people uh, in foreign countries have had to deal with. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that one, you know. Yeah, where do you we know. go? I mean, you know, if you've got, you know, you've got an analysis of problems. You've got problems. There are problems. Where do you go? You go to your... Well, right now, for the last year, we've been trying to do, you know, Occupy, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Bohemian Grove, Occupy Japanese consulates, whatever we're doing to Occupy, I mean, that seems to be the tactic right now, but I'm afraid, I mean, after coming back from Bohemian Grove, you know, I've been organizing there for 33 years and seen things only get worse in 33 years, and the same guys that were making million, hundreds of millions then are making millions now. You know, uh, and what's you everybody going to wake up? The system is good to, and it's the same same group. But as long as they stay indifferent to nonviolent protest, I'm afraid nothing's going to change. And I don't want to advocate violent protest, but I just fear somewhere that's going to happen. And the only people that are capable, that are generally proactive with violence, is the right wingers that we don't really want to have too much to do with. So what are you what are you involved with right now? You're you're always a busy activist. Uh, what, well, are you, right what are you now, organizing today? Right now, I'm, I'm I'm still working with Abalone Alliance. We've got the office here, and we've, we're trying to work on setting up a new statewide coalition. Um, you know, since Fukushima, we've got Nuclear Free California. That's nuclearfreecalifornia.org. If you ever want there to go, go there and check out what's going on. You know, and we're trying to organize, you know, a statewide coalition. We just had the statewide coalition sponsor the uh, Fukushima Mothers uh, tour of California. They came and spoke at, at uh, Diablo, at, uh, at uh, Bohemian Grove, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house by the time she got through talking about how her organic farm that her grandchildren used to come visit her at could no longer be visited by her grandchildren. All of us were pretty messed up by that. Um, people here do not feel personally touched. That's why radiation is such a, you know, I mean, people try to do the fear, you know, fearing everybody. Of, oh, we're going to get radiation, we're going to get radiation. Well, yeah, we are going to get radiation, but that doesn't seem to scare anybody. The only thing that really scares people is a huge fucking meltdown. Right. That gets their attention locally. Well, Three Mile Island did it. Got everybody's attention. Locally. For, I mean, yeah. even then, you know, yeah, we got, we got it. That was early on. It wouldn't get it. It wouldn't get the time of day now. I don't think. That's pretty sad. But keep up your efforts. You know, that's why I'm out here live streaming. How's it going? To bring you the information. Uh, you know, try to get you active, get you involved in some of these protests around the world. Um, let's check it out here. I think I might be carried at. Uh, globalrev.tv um, internationally so we're out here I'm trying to get down to every protest that I can get to because I believe that even if you can't attend the protest you can watch it online and at least you feel like you're participating in some way um, because you can log on to the social stream and chat with me here right on my smartphone Unfortunately, as the media you know, doesn't pay attention to how no. many people are and you know, they want to know how many bodies are at the event that's that's the problem with the media you know they like to do a head count the numbers counters the bean counters you know, so they, you know, we can't really 
well, you know, so you yeah, get thousands true. of people I mean, out there. The word out, you know, Bohemian Grove thing, about 300 people showed up to the event. We know that it was live on KPFA for two hours, so there was probably a pretty good listenership to it. And it was also the whole thing was streamed live online. And I don't know how many people were listening in on that. And then there was a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, quick texting and stuff going on. There was a big text. Yeah, constantly. A lot of Facebook pages went up, and a lot of photographs got exchanged and stuff like that. So it's gotten out. I mean, things. Yeah, are we're a little more out, sophisticated in our outreach today than we were 25 years ago. Oh, five years ago. I mean, yeah, we're just putting up flyers, right? Last time I put an event on there was 80 or 90. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was 2008, I think I put on the last event there. We had the Green Party. I was head, head of the Green Party organizing group. And we put on an event at, at, at Diablo Camp, at, at, <laughs> at Bohemian Grove, and that had none of it. I mean, that had, there was no, I mean, we, well, basically, we got, we got Russia today. Uh, their priority is pretty good about covering this, anything anything here in the United States. Yeah, yeah, they're good about that. I watch them almost every day online at RT.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty good. I mean, they, they, well, they cover the good news here, and they're even fair about what goes on in their own country. It's just when they start talking about foreign policy, like Syria, that I find it kind of offensive of what they're talking about. They've been pro Assad all along, and and uh, while we don't want NATO to to invade Syria. Nonetheless, that you know, there should be some support for the people there because it was a, milit a dictatorship. And it's still uh, Team Six when you need it. Yeah, I just hope that more people, um, less people, get killed over there. And unfortunately, violence is a way of life in this society. Yeah, but we're here to change it and be nonviolent. And one of the ways that we can best defend ourselves against the violence of the state and corporations is by live streaming. So uh, we provide a record that's here of the event, and uh, you can uh, take us. You can actually subpoena. The stuff that's on my Ustream channel, and we can go to court, and I'll be happy to testify on behalf of whoever is fighting the state or prosecution. And I do make an effort not to film any illegal activity, so uh, I do not want it to be used against people that are at the protest. Anymore, so, uh, how do you tell the difference? Yeah. You know, I mean, they're, they're, you know, anything can be declared illegal if well, there was a you know, the powers that be make that choice at this point. Yeah, if you get if you get the attention of the authorities. You'll definitely find that there's agents provocateurs. I don't want to make everybody paranoid, but yes, that does happen relatively regularly. Um, there are people in the Occupy movement that uh, I don't want to be suspicious of, but sometimes I felt like that they were doing the bidding of the state, yeah. and I wouldn't be surprised to find out, you know, when when all the classified information gets released sooner or later that oh, yeah. you Bohemian, know. Oh yeah, the Bohemian Grove event. You know, we had a group of people. You know, they're the speculative people. You know, they're like there's babies being burned in the cremation of care and there's all this stuff going on that can't really be proved but they've got all these videos from uh, yeah, yeah, jo Jones guy and everything like that and they're James and so, so they came in and they came to the planning meetings and joined in with somebody to oppose having a march and then of course when the inevitable march happened because you don't give a four hour event cussing out the bohemians for four hours and then tell people, okay, have a nice day, go home, drive carefully. You know, you got to go to the grave and the grove. And there were a lot of us who wanted to march up to the grove. It was a half mile of that. A lot of us wanted to, but there were people that didn't want it to, and this group of of people supported that not happening. And then, so when the inevitable march did happen, guess who jumped out in front of the march with their banner? Same people. You know, there's they're they're. they're and they were vigiling out there. You know they're being paid by somebody to come and vigil out in Bohemian. And there's, you know, work against I'm you. committed to the thing, but standing in 100 degree temperature at the front gate, I don't let them push me around like that anymore. You know, the ruling elite can go have their thing. We know what's going on. We're trying to get it to the mainstream media about what's going on. They don't pay any attention because obviously their bouncers are inside having a blast. Yeah, they won't cover it unless the police are beating the shit out of people. Basically, yeah, that's what I found. Our fault. Well, you can be rest assured that Don and myself, and as well as numerous other people that I've seen here, we are committed to nonviolence as a political, as a political principle, and we also believe that nonviolent direct action is the most effective way of reaching the public. Uh, I see one of our uh, uh, tormentors from Occupy is walking down the street here. I forgot his name, but he he likes to torment occupiers. Uh, he's known. No, been known to be violent. I've seen him pull his nightstick out on more than one occasion. 
I'll get a few more shots of him so you know who he is. So that when you're walking down the street and you see this cop, you know, you can be aware that he does, he does not hesitate to initiate violence. Because I think that awareness of what's going on is our best weapon to change people's minds and to really get them to think about what's going on in their lives and what's happening and not just so blindly accept the, uh, the bidding of the 1%. So uh, that's why I'm here. I see that uh, a lot of people are starting to show up. Yeah, they're getting ready. Right, I, I understand that they're going to be delivering a petition up to the Consulate General here. Uh, this is one of the larger consulates here in San Francisco. Uh, United, San, uh, they act, San Francisco is actually owned, a lot of San Francisco is actually owned by Japan Interest. Uh, oh, yeah, I see China, Japan. A lot of money, a lot of a Japanese lot of money, money here. A lot of yeah, but Japan's going through a lot of problems today. Their banking system collapsed in the 80s, which will give you a little taste of what might happen here in the United States if the uh, too big to fail banks but, collapse. You know what the thing is, I think it's kind of funny too that you know General Motors is starting to put out their big muscle trucks again yeah. after what happened, and now Japan, even though they're without the nuclear power. Uh, Toyota is number one again. Go figure, you know. People want those small cars. Why the fuck does uh, does Chevrolet insist on making the big muscle cars that get us to the money when we know gas is going to do nothing but go up over the long term? I just don't get their thinking. You know, you don't hear about the Chevy Volt. I've never seen a Chevy Volt advertised. I don't think they've uh, started with those yet. How are you doing? Hi. Uh, you have this driver here? Let's see if I got this one. Do you have it? Yeah, this is uh, Livermore Labs. There was four people arrested uh, out at Livermore Labs yesterday at a protest against all the nuclear weapons research that's done there. Uh, Livermore Labs has been the site of many, many protests since the late 70s against nuclear weapons research and nuclear research in general. Uh, I mean, it's okay to do, I would imagine, to do research, but uh, let's see, the closest reactor here in, to San Francisco would be the one they have over at University of California, Berkeley, at UC Berkeley. Say what? Don't they still have an operator a nuclear reactor over at UC Berkeley? And not just I a Livermore think Labs? Palisados is still uh, operating. I'm not know. positive, but I think... Well, that's only like a, a few hundred feet from the fault line, the Hayward Fault. So God forbid, you know, if they had like a, uh, a 7.0 earthquake here in San Francisco, that that reactor would probably uh, melt down. Either it's a real small one, but it would still melt down yeah. and release toxic uh, radiation and uh, pretty much devastates the Bay Area, I would imagine. Um, you know, when you know in San Francisco... That is so little bit known about that from my understanding. That's why I like to bring it up. It's got a really small, pretty small critical mass so that even if it lost coolant, it would still... Uh, so you think it would be doubtful? Really but still, it's in a high-density so population uh, area. Population. You know? But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know for sure, but I think... Well, we're used to it. to all the other big operating ones, you know, it's, a, it's, it's sort of like in that class with uh, medical, uh, the nuclear medical medicine. We have concerns about it, we'd like them to find alternatives to it, but in the scheme of things, it's pretty minor, you know, and plus they've worked on recycling tritium. Which yeah, heavy water. Tritium out of the out of waste stream, which is, that's... Well, we're used to dealing with death on a daily basis here in San Francisco uh, because you never know when the next big quake is going to strike. Yeah. And uh, so every day could be your last day here. You know, we live with that all the time uh, here in San Francisco. You know, nobody speaks about it too much. But uh, whenever you feel a little trembler and or something like that, you always are prepared for the worst. Uh, if you live, yeah, if you live in the Bay Area and uh, Oakland, San Francisco in particular, uh, we'd always advise that you keep an emergency kit of water and enough food to last you for a, at least three days and medicine and always have that kit ready and keep it up to date and keep it in some place that is readily available so if you have a fire or there is an earthquake that you can get to it easily uh, because water and utilities will be shut down in um, my experience Loma Prieta uh, which was severe uh, the power was off for quite a, quite a number of hours yeah. so always make sure that you uh, you have enough water, your batteries, and food to last for up to three days because you never know. Uh, and that's what we have to contend with here in the Bay Area. And any other place where there's, like Japan or Indonesia, where there's significant volcanic activity, 
or earthquake activity on the fault lines. They had a per, uh, Peru was uh, hit pretty badly last week. They had a 7.1, and also in uh, Chile, which uh, had a significant uh, earthquake just a few months ago. So uh, fortunately, our earthquakes in here in California are not as severe as they could yeah, be. It's been a scary long time since we've had a local creator since an earthquake. Yeah. I think we're probably about due for another one. We've got thousands of falls in the state, hundreds of them are capable of an earthquake that's at least as big as one So now we can add nuclear disaster to the list of disasters to people. Uh, what can harm life on Earth? And, you know, when a nuclear accident, you know, if there's an earthquake, uh, you can pretty much, as soon as the aftershocks are over, you can pretty much start rebuilding. And, uh, yeah, Japan yeah, was virtually not bothered at all by the earthquake. No, it's the nuclear although, disasters. Although they're saying that there was actually uh, damage to the reactor caused by the earthquake. Uh, and they were starting to already see that there was radioactive release before the tsunami hit. So there was, they're saying that it was caused by the tsunami, but the quake actually did do damage, but they're not talking about that in public. So and, we had uh, nuclear disaster. Look at the, at the timeline, there was a radiation alert that went off a few minutes before the, the before the tidal wave hit. So, you know, so they're trying to say that it was all caused by the tidal wave and all that stuff. But I mean, even if that's the truth, I mean, that's the thing, you know, tidal waves happen everywhere, you know, they, they, they could start in Indonesia and hit L.A., you know. Yeah, I know, set an up is right on the water, right, yeah, you go so by it when you're, on the, when you're on the train. Uh, the canyon, they say, is like a, a 180 feet or something off the water, but it goes into this little narrow inlet, so it seems like a 50 foot wave coming in there could wash up that far, plus I understand that... Well, they're dumping their, their water out there. ...the are down lower. Waste ponds, like they're still worried about uh, reactor four waste pond in Japan. If that peeled over and spilled all the radiation out, you know, Japan would be made uninhabitable real quickly. Not to mention most of the North Pacific. So the land is basically uninhabitable after any nuclear disaster, and that's the real cost because people are hundreds of square miles, or like in Chernobyl, are no longer uh, habitable for human or animal. Uh, habitation uh, definitely affects wildlife and the effect is when you infect one thing in the biosphere since everything is interconnected everything becomes affected so the best solution to any of these nuclear disasters is to stop building these reactors and to uh, start thinking about ways of generating clean energy right. about the shakiness. I ordered a tripod so it should be here any day now. <laughs> My head keeps cramping up so do forgive me.
Out of here, we're at 50 Fremont Street, Consulate General of Japan. Are protesting nuclear power. This is a noted action committee who sponsored the protest. pretty equally all over the all over Japan but not only in Japan already contaminated Pacific and to us and this is not okay so that's uh, one of the one of our proposals that Japan should stop this contamination and compensate for the people who are affected by this and also we want security evacuation of all the people not only Japanese people everybody who uh, share the Pacific Rim and this is the day of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that we commemorate about the people and also this is the day to break the silence. Too much money. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so what we have today is like a dancing, singing, chanting, and also people wanna, if people wanna speak up. I know the green action here is here, thank you. And tri Valley Cares is coming and also like, no nukes action, that's us. Like we are, and so many people from the community of the Union City and the Marine and Dry Valley, like, you know, so, so many people from Livermore and East Bay and especially from Berkeley, there are crowds of people. So if you want to sk speak up, come to the mic. And meanwhile, we're going to get the petition and we're planning to sign this petition, submit it after we march to the PG&E join the other group who are trying to shut down California nukes, which are Diablo Canyon and San Onofre. And then after that, we're going to come back with more signatures to the petition and submit that. We got, you know, we are allowed to give the <laughs> petitions. You know, this is a civil action. It's just non-violent, so nobody has to worry about, you know, the police and other people. So, yeah, we should come back here. And then even if you feel like, you know, you want to gather more petitions, I gave you already, you know, more petition sheets, so you can come back. We're planning another action and other, other opportunities to study about anti-nuclear works, our resistance that resonates a lot of other forms of resistance. And thank you so much for coming. Do I need introduction? Uh, okay. Okay. 
so Steve Zeltzer, here comes a Steve Zeltzer from Labor Video Project, and he's the also uh, organizer from No Nukes Action Committee. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Omi. So this is a, a very important day because 76 years ago, the United States dropped two nuclear bombs. 67 years ago, they dropped two nuclear bombs on Japan. And hundreds of thousands of people were killed with those nuclear bombs. The people of Japan are still suffering from those nuclear bombs. The people still have cancers, and their children have deformities as a result of that nuclear bomb. So this is not over. Hiroshima and Nagasaki are not over. And not only are they not over, but what happened on March 11th in 2011 was that they had another nuclear explosion. This was called Fukushima. Fukushima was actually a dirty bomb. When the United States talks about dirty bombs, what are we talking about? We're talking about a dirty nuclear explosion that happened at a nuclear plant. That's what happened. It was a dirty bomb that went off, and it wasn't an accident. It was man-made explosion. It was man-made because TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Power Company, because the Japanese government said, nuclear power is safe. Don't worry. And of course, they used money to bribe people in these poor communities to set up these nuclear plants. But they lied to the Japanese people. People believed they were safe, that they had nothing to worry about. But we know now that the ring of fire that these earthquakes that are on, and the earthquake zone that we have in California are very dangerous are very dangerous. There could be an earthquake in California that could lead to a nuclear dirty bomb going off in San Onofre and Diablo Canyon. In fact, they want the ratepayers of California to spend $60 million for earthquake studies to find out if these plants are in danger. We know they're in danger because we know nuclear power is a dangerous technology and it certainly should not be put on oceans as they have in Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and in the United States along the coast of California. So we are here today to demand that the Japanese government not reopen the plants. They opened the oil plant. People in Japan are waking up. Hundreds of thousands of people throughout Japan are standing up and saying, we cannot afford another Fukushima. How many people have to die? How many people have to get cancers? Also in Japan, you can go. A worker has to do their job. Yeah. That, that's another issue. The workers in Japan, the immigrant workers, the workers in these plants are being contaminated. Those senators, companies, subcontracting, co uh, subcontracting companies are, co are, are covering the dose emitters with lead so they don't get a proper reading of the contamination. This is a crime. We are calling for criminal prosecution of government officials, of TEPCO officials for covering up crimes against the people. How can you put a lead cover on a dosimeter to measure the amount of radiation that you have? This is a crime that has to be addressed and we're going to be presenting a petition saying that they need to criminally prosecute those who are covering up this disaster. The other thing in Japan is that the radiation is still leaking out of plants. Radiation is coming to California. Tuna have been contaminated with cesium. This contamination continues. They say in Japan, listen to this, that you can decontaminate forests. The idea, how do you decontaminate a forest? With leaves and, and brushes and things like that. You can't decontaminate a forest. When it rains, all the water runs down and it goes into the rivers and then it goes into the oceans. There's no such thing as decontamination of forests. So the government of Japan is lying to us. There is no decontamination. The cesium and the radioactivity is going to be there for thousands of years. For thousands of years. We have to tell the truth about what is going on. 30% of the children, there's been a study, 30% of the children in Fukushima have cysts, thyroid cysts on their throats. In their, this means they're getting contaminated. This is a highly unusual thing to have a cyst, a thyroid cyst in your body. But it's happening to the children of Fukushima. It's happening to the children of Fukushima after being told that there's no immediate danger. How can a government say there's no immediate danger from nuclear radiation? How can you say that when we know it takes years to develop cancers? It's not an immediate thing, but you do get cancer from radiation. 
and there are cancer epidemics that are developing in Japan. There's also cancer epidemics at San Onofre and at Diablo Canyon because these nuclear plants are giving off radiation. So we say to the government of Japan, to the people of the world, we cannot afford these 50 nuclear plants being reopened. Right now, plant number four in Japan is threatened with, with a fire. It's exposed, the nuclear rods. There are thousands of nuclear rods, waste nuclear rods. They're just in the open space. Another big earthquake and those nuclear rods could start fires. But it's not just in Japan. In the United States, there are 104 nuclear plants with hundreds of thousands of used nuclear rods. This is a threat to the people of the United States. This is a threat to the people of the world. We have to add our voices. We have to say no more. No more nuclear power. No more nukes. Shut them down. Shut them down. No more nukes. 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 Shut them down. So we are going to continue this. We want you to uh, sign the petitions. We want to have a regular event here, letting people know that the plants need to be shut down. Uh, OI and these other plants that they're trying to reopen are a danger to our health and safety. We cannot afford it. And also, we need solar energy. We need alternative energy so people can live without nuclear power plants. Our children's future is at stake. Radiation it changes their genes. It changes their future. It changes our future. So we have to stand up for humanity, the environment, and we have to stop these nuclear plants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. So anti-nukes work um, requires a persistent work. And one of the people from Berkeley community who does persistent work as much as like a jellyfish does. You know, the jellyfish, do you know anything about jellyfish and nuclear power plants? So, in Japan, Ori reactor was restarted. And who got in? People blockaded the gate and tried to stop it from restarting. But the jellyfish went in. It temporarily stopped the new reactor. It stuck in. So, you know, they were not able to operate that. And historically, they have been doing that. They have done to the nuclear reactor in Scotland, Israel, Japan and also in the coast of Florida, and also in Diablo Canyon. So jellyfish persistence is what we need. And people who have it, like one of the people groups who have it is Circle of Concern. And Don Marlin from Circle of Concerns can speak about the possibility of like keep doing you know this work. And he's going to make an announcement about the schedule of their next action. <laughs> Comparison to a jellyfish is very flattering, and uh, actually, my name is Marlin, so I'm often uh, mistaken for a fish anyway. So, uh, well, I wasn't. What well, how do I do this? Well, anyway, uh, I, I just had a few points. I wasn't prepared to speak, but one first one I wanted to do is to amplify what Steve was saying about the victims of nuclear war and nuclear power and the irradiation that they cause. Because we know about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and we know about the nuclear power plants and what's happened in Fukushima. Uh, I just saw um, a video the other day, which was uh, a, after a, a look back at Iraq. And one of, the, um, one of the scenes was in a maternity hospital in Fallujah. And uh, Fallujah was, was, was really saturated uh, with, there's a shooting gallery for the U.S. Marines. And one of the results, uh, which was very graphically shown in the uh, video, was an interview with, a, with a, um, an obstetrician. And she said, uh, and, she sh and, and they showed the many, 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 many babies who are being born with terrible deformities. This is clearly a result of depleted uranium munitions. And these are standard munitions. They're not just used in Iraq. Anywhere the United States is engaged in warfare like in Afghanistan, uh, they are contaminating the environment. And we all know just as around Fukushima that children are the most vulnerable because their cells are reproducing more quickly than adults. And so 
these babies and their mothers have been contaminated all over iraq from the first gulf war the babies in basra started being born with deformities fifteen or twenty years ago so this is another way another thing that we have to keep in mind and try to stop and in terms of nuclear power in the united states it was pretty much a dead issue in terms of building new nuclear power plants until because of the because of the huge amount of insurance that's necessary and no private insurance companies were willing to to give insurance to a nuclear power plant and then the u.s uh in the administration of the current president of the united states barack obama decided to come to the rescue and uh and commit american taxpayers money to indemnify two new nuclear power plants in georgia so this is something that we should all keep in mind when we decide who we're going to vote for or at the very least uh if we don't want to be completely passive zombies in this election to bring this up at the appropriate time uh to the people who are telling us to vote for a or b um as to the final thing is that umi was kind enough to talk about the circle of concern this is a small vigil that's been going for over 30 years and it takes place every thursday from 12 to 1 and sunday from 1 to 2 it's the west lawn of the uc berkeley campus and the reason that we are there is that the university of california manages the national nuclear weapons laboratories they've been doing that since the second world war and the university of california regents renew those contracts every five years and we are trying to let people know who go by that that's not a good idea that the role of the university is to pursue the truth in an objective and nonpartisan way instead of weighing in on the side of mass suicide and that's what these rep these labs represent so uh, we are there every uh, Thursday from 12 to 1 and Sunday from 1 to 2 please join us one of the things we would like to bring about is a national televised debate about the issue of nuclear weapons uh, it's hard to do it costs a huge amount of money and there's a lot of logistics involved but that's something that would profit everybody around the country because we all learn about nuclear weapons and nuclear warfare at some point in our conditioning and then we learn just as quickly to shove it to the back room in our minds and not think about it very much but we need to if we don't confront it it's never going to go away so no nukes no nukes no nukes yes solar and uh, we have to keep in mind that people in nevada who are downwinders and downstreamers of los alamos at the test site they are holding they've been holding this hunger strike since the you know 26th of July I think so if you want to join and send a response to the video that's one of the way to act of course you know like so there are so many ways you can go to the nearest site like UC Berkeley you know go ride a bike to Livermore or come to BGN every day or come to the consulate and the next speaker is Mary Harrison from Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice and they've been the supporter of our action for a long time and thank you Marie. good afternoon my name is marie harrison as she said i'm from green action for health and environmental justice uh, as an environmentalist i want to let you know that our hearts and our bodies are on the line with you but as a mother a grandmother and a great grandmother who happens to live in baby hunters point where the Navy shipyard that we fought so hard to get shut down and now fighting even harder to get cleaned up, we have the dubious distinction of having a lab, the NORAD lab or Tory still left on that property. I don't know if any of you guys realize that that was the laboratory where one of those bombs, uh, I think they call it uh, Big Boy. What a name for a bomb that's gonna destroy so many lives. You know. Uh, 
city standing here looking at all these faces and thinking about all these children i have to think about my own we're struggling very hard to fight to force them to clean up the nuclear waste that was buried in the ground in baby hunters point our families are suffering and dying but it, uh, i realized a long time ago that it's not just here in america it's from one corner of this world to the next and if we are not vigilant if we do not lend our voices to theirs in Japan, if we do not lend our voices to every corner of this world who are struggling to fight for a kind of freedom that cannot be gained by being silent and going silently into the night, we have to stand tall and we have to let our voices be heard around the world. We are strong, we are together, we will not go silently into the night and we will never ever again support or allow to happen what happened to Japan. Not in my lifetime and not in the lifetime of my children or my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren or theirs because I'm laying the groundwork now and I trust that you are too. This madness must stop and if we don't say it, no one else will. That's obvious. We need to say it together and we need to say it strong and we need to stand together and let it be known never again. Never again. Never again. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next speaker is Paul Kangas, who actually is a solar activist who have been also supporter of No Names Action. And like Kusako over there, like he has created San Francisco version of Nuclear Free Zone. Thank you, Paul. Hi. Um, do people know what really significant world event happened shortly after Fukushima? One of the most important events in the world happened shortly after Fukushima. The German government looked at their atomic reactors and said, we don't need them, we're going to shut down the atomic reactors of Germany, and the reason we don't need them is because Germany has a law called the PDM tariff which pays homeowners 54 cents a kilowatt hour to harvest solar energy. And they said, we're getting as much energy from nukes as we are from solar and wind. We don't need nukes. And now Japan has a PDM tariff. So uh, if you, I have a petition for a PDM tariff for San Francisco. I talked to the mayor about it. He's agreed to pass it. So I need uh, signatures. Uh, thank you very much. So, before we're heading down to PG&E headquarters, um, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna like practice dancing. But before this, um, Chizu Hamada will speak out. And Chizu-san is the person who have never been involved with, you know, activism so far. That's what she says. And I think every life is political, so I don't know. But uh, Chizu-san <laughs> Chizu is a really splendid person who put a lot of work for this, and she's a great organizer, and she can. Talk. <laughs> Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for people who come here today. I'm very, very uh, grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is definitely larger rally today than the uh, June 22nd first rally I attended. So only that point is already successful. Yes. Yes. And, uh, uh, 47, 67 years ago, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, suffered for the atomic Ooh. bomb. And then the, uh, America actually dropped two different kinds of atomic bombs. For me, really feel like a uh, testing bomb. And then the people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that time I feel they were guinea pig. And then the Japanese uh, should really know how uh, deadly radiation is. I thought we learned a lot about that uh, from those uh, incidents. But uh, the March 11th last year happened to Fukushima. And then the, we really know now the radi radiation is deadly, deadly poison. 
and that we don't need really nuclear plants in Japan. I was so ignorant that I didn't know there are 54 nuclear plants in Japan until March 11th last year. I think that people uh, were told lies that government and industry always told us that nuclear, uh, those are under control, very safe, and then cheap, very efficient. Don't worry about it. But we know that is a lie. We are tired of being lied. And we are tired of being sitting and then making silence. We like to uh, stand up. Yeah. And then we like to let our voice out loudly. Um, and there are two nuclear plants also in California. Of course, we live in California. This is not a matter of Japanese or American. So we live for the global uh, danger that we have to condemn all the nuclear plants and the nuclear weapons. Yes. We really like to stand up for that. For that, I like to suggest that we want to have maybe uh, every rally on 11th every month. Woo. This year only four days of 11th, so hope you and people come get together again. And then we are now going to a parade and join to a uh, group to condemn the uh, close shutdown to nuclear plants in California. And then we are coming back here again and then 4.45 we're going to present many, like, about like a thousand uh, signatures we collected to present to the uh, General Consulate in Japan. So please uh, stay with us. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you, Chizu. And then uh, one of the uh, one of the our alliance in Tribali Cares, and they held um, held a protest yesterday. And uh, one of the things that we No Nukes Action have been doing is the tour. Was the tour of Chiekoshina. I hope, like many of you, have met. She is a anti nukes activist and a farmer from Japan. And uh, we have reached the communities of the anti anti nukes community in Japan in America in the U.S. and uh, Laura Megumi who is not here who is a translator and I have spoken about the tour and for the preparation of the Livermore and for to commemorate Hiroshima and Nagasaki and also remember about Fukushima we made a statement can I read this to you? Yes. Sorry you can't say no. <laughs> so uh, we want to speak about the ways that we are oppressed by nuclear power and also about the ways that we perpetuate the violence around us and to ch challenge us to look at our own surroundings. Often we say that we cannot touch, smell, taste, or see the radiation. But we might actually be able to listen to the radiation. There are actually sound in radiation. We gather in early August here to pray in silence for those who are still suffering the generational impact of the radiation. Meanwhile, the system of atomic currency continues, but we are provided mechanisms of silence by those who control nukes. The military-industrial complex works hard to keep us from making connections between state violence, military violence, and interpersonal violence. At the Hanford site in Washington, D.C., the mosque contaminated the nuclear site in the U.S., and where plutonium was manufactured for the first nuclear bomb and for fat men detonated on Nagasaki, we have friends organizing there against the contamination and the violation of human rights. They explain that this sound that they hear as the silence of complicity. When the community they requested transparency in the process of this humongous militarization, they were given whistles, KI capsules, and some local maps. Likewise, in Three Mile Island, orphan residents heard sirens and speakers commanding to the workers while nobody saw whom they were conversing to. The sound including silence 
we always delivered like that was the silence or the sound was always delivered to the people and all over the pacific rim when we swim in the ocean in japan in marshallese in japan also or like in philippines we occasionally hear a boom sound underwater the dull noise of militarization cutting through the currents it is easy in the U.S. to con consume the victimization of Japan, and we are told to pray, to cry, without being critical of the militarized friendship between the U.S. and Japan. For Japan also, it is easy to rely on this militarized structure and name it that we are silenced. But we are choosing to be more violent. We know how we exploit the so-called losers from this never-ending world war. For example, that's why uh, Japan targets Vietnamese, Pakistani, and Bengali workers to take care of Fukushima contamination and exploit the youth and day laborers more to, incin to incinerate the radioactive rebels to maintain economical recovery and upgraded gentrification. Japan is planning to dump radioactive waste to Mongolia, donate uh, contaminated produce and seafood to the Philippines, North African regions. Japan funds elite students to come to the U.S. and to Korea to aid their study of measures that support nuclear power. When we choose to continue this kind of warning, it is easy and comforting to separate ourselves from someone else's tragic struggle. But when we listen, we can see and hear a lot in common among many communities that appear disparate and far apart but we fight the same socio-political powers like children in japan who have to breathe contaminated air your children in cities cough and get asthma because of the the air is too polluted mass media silence prevents us from educating each other meanwhile elementary schools are shut down to be turned into parking lot for the police who in turn perpetuate greater violence and ag against the mass oppressed communities. We're reaching to the point where we decolonize ourselves from this generational atomic slavery and PTSD. Let's be deliberate about two concepts that we know already and hear all the time. One is radiation has no borders. And second is not in my backyard. Many downwinders and downstreamers like us here in the Livermore, in the Bay Area, everywhere, know that radioactive borders also suggest political borders and distance. As people at the Hanford rally invited us, let's keep asking ourselves, what's in our backyard? Keep in mind that we crawl, listen, and actually know what all these noise mean. We shall not detach ourselves from who we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, well, we're going to march now to pg and &E, which is an operator of Diablo Canyon. And there's going to, we're going to join up with Occupy San Francisco Environmental Action Committee and Green Action. We're going to all go march there. So we're going to march to Market Street, make a right, and it's only about a block and a half away. So let's chant and all be in solidarity. No nukes, shut the plants down. 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 Shut the plants down. No news. 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 Yeah, we're going to marching to 245 Market Street, uh, near First. No new action here in San Francisco. Glad you're watching. We'll be here until at least 5 o'clock, or 4 o'clock rather, sorry. Reporting on this action. I gotta watch behind me. 
still in the chair. Pretty soon out. I'll be out of it. Doing a little workout here. It's good for me. We're streaming off of OBAU.org as well. In addition to USTRE.AM slash capital G HXB. Sorry for the shaky hand there, folks.
so many layers